Hello everybody. So it has been a very long time since I have filmed any type of video and that can mean like anything honestly. So if this is your first time watching one of my videos, my name is Gianna and I don't edit my videos. I just record and then upload it straight to YouTube. I don't cut anything out so if I say something stupid it is here to stay and I ramble a lot so this is kind of what you get. Um, I am making this video because it is May. There's mental health awareness month but it's also BPD awareness month and for those of you who don't know BPD stands for borderline personality disorder. It is a very stigmatized mental illness and there are hardly any videos or information out there about it. It's honest, it's getting a lot more um, out there I think because more people are getting diagnosed with it. However, whenever I look I have a lot of trouble finding articles and videos and things out there and I'm the kind of person who likes to read about others' experiences or hear about them, watch them, so I don't feel as alone in what I'm feeling. So I felt like it was important to make this video and kind of talk about ending the stigma around it and talk freely and hope some, even one other person can kind of like relate to me and what I'm feeling and what I'm going through because no one should be alone. And yeah, so this is kind of difficult to talk about because I still, I got diagnosed when I was 19 and I am 24 and it has been a long five years coming to terms with this and figuring out what it means and it entails so much and I'm here to try and explain a little bit of it. So I have a bunch of books here. I have a lot of books and I highlight them. I work with my therapist every week about it. Um, it's continuous, it's continuous work and I have highlighted things that I'm going to talk about and the first thing that I wanted to show everyone and discuss was the, where is it, the nine symptoms of it. So let's see the first the first symptom is frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment so that means that that's very that's one thing I struggle with the most is abandonment and it's just constant paranoia and fear that someone you love or anyone in your life is just going to abandon you automatically just like leave for no reason and your brain will come up with all of these different reasons and you'll hear voices in your head about all of these crazy things that you know never in a million years would come true but they feel so real to you and it could be about a person that you kind of just met it could be about a family member it could be truly anybody that your brain could just be like they're leaving you like they're abandoning you there's not going to be a reason or there is going to be a reason or because you said this thing last tuesday on accident like they're gonna be done with you. Like it's constant fear. And it, it's probably one of the worst things about this. It really sucks. And for these symptoms, you need, you need to have like five of them out of the nine to categorize yourself as being diagnosed with BPD. That's what I've read and heard. So the first one is to avoid abandonment, which also causes people to act very intensely to avoid being abandoned. The second one is unstable and intense interpersonal relationships alternating between extremes of idolation and devaluation. Sometimes I read things wrong, like I pronounce them wrong because I know this doesn't sound correct, but I'm dyslexic, so sometimes I read things backwards, so like they come out wrong. Anyways, hopefully you guys understand what I mean. So this is kind of what we call splitting in BPD language. It means we either think of someone as like, on a pedestal like god tier best thing in the world or we go to like they're horrible they suck like they're toxic all of that so it's like when we're in that mindset it's like you're either the best or you're the worst and it's hard to find any gray area it's like black or white i do that a lot of times it's a big part of it 
The third one is lack of clear and consistent sense of identity and self-image. Another one. Third, so far we're three for three with me. This, I don't know who I am. A lot of the time when I'm with people, I morph to be who I'm around and I pick up on things they say and you know, sometimes I'll dress like them, I'll act like them and it's not on purpose, it's just, it's hard to figure out who I am and sometimes I'm like, who am I? Do I even like who I am? Am I just my illness? Am I, I sometimes I feel nothing. So I'm like, am I nothing? I still to this day don't really know. And I've been on so many medications. I've been on so many different journeys and things that like, I like have shaped who I am, but still at the end of the day, when I go to sleep, like I can't really pinpoint who that person is. So, that's very difficult and I don't know if I'll ever wake up one day and be like I think this is truly who I am it's not someone that I've morphed myself into being because of other people this is truly just me as a genuine person so maybe that'll happen maybe I will you know learn more about it and get to that point but as of right now me being real I don't know who I am and I guess that's okay I have to tell myself it's okay so I don't hate myself, but we're gonna say that it's okay. All right, number four. This one does not apply to me as much, but we'll get into that. So it says impulsiveness in potentially self-damaging behavior such as drug abuse, spending, sex, binge eating, reckless driving. So those are just some examples. Um, I don't really, um, and I'm not really like that. I'm not very impulsive. I like to think things through. Um, I can't drive, so I don't recklessly drive. Um, I don't do drugs. I don't do, I mean, no, no judgment on anyone that does, but I'm just saying like none of those things. Like I have obsessions. Like once I get into something, I definitely obsess over it, whether it's like Hell's Kitchen or I love stickers. So then sometimes I'll go on a bender of like spending a hundred dollars on stickers, but like that very rarely happens. And I wouldn't say that it's like a problem and I'm very self-aware. So I can typically be like, this is a problem. I'm doing this. I know it's a problem, but that is thankfully something that I don't relate to as much. Although a lot of other people that I have read about that has BPD, that's like one of their biggest things is like their impulsive self damaging behaviors. Um, number five, reoccurrent suicidal behavior, gestures or threats or self mutilating behavior. I have struggled with this. Um, it's very off and on. I feel like the problem behind this is when you're, you know, disassociating, you want to bring yourself back down to reality. Sometimes you think that hurting yourself can be the only way to like come back down to your body. Sometimes you hate yourself so much that you want to punish yourself. Sometimes you get so overwhelmed with everything you're feeling that you just kind of don't want to be here. And I think there's a difference between being suicidal and just kind of not wanting to be alive because most of the time that I've had those feelings, it's not that I have the desire to want to kill myself. Trigger warning. I uh, will put that at the beginning of this video. Um, it's just that I don't want to feel these things anymore because it's so, it's just exhausting and it takes such a toll on you. So I feel like that's where mine stems from. It's different for everybody, obviously. <clears throat> Moving on. Number six, several moods, changes, and extreme reactivity to situational stresses. Probably my second one that I'm like most, most relate to. Um, my mood swings, I, one second I'm like, so happy for no reason like i got the best news in the world and then the next minute it's like like the sinking feeling in my chest like i got the worst news someone died i lost my job i lost my best friend like and it's so hard to explain to people that it's like oh they're like what's wrong and you're like i don't know and they're like well why are you sad i don't know most of the time i don't know and sometimes people get frustrated with me because they're like well there has to be a reason like and it's like, if you ask me how I'm feeling in the span of an hour, like you're going to get a different answer every, every 10 minutes. And as frustrating as it is for some people who will ask me that, it is just as frustrating being me experiencing that because I wish I had reasons. Like if I'm sad, like that's fine in the sense of 
I want to have a reason to be sad. I want to have a reason to be happy. It's hard having nothing behind those emotions and trying to cope with them and explain to others where you're at. So I definitely struggle the most with mood swings. I definitely, it's, that's definitely been such a struggle for me and trying to figure out what, if what I'm feeling is real and I know that everything I feel is valid and real, but I have to like tell myself that in order to pull myself out of feeling sometimes that nothing happened, there's no reason to be reacting this way, so I need to feel what I'm feeling and then I need to move past it. So number seven in symptoms is chronic feelings of emptiness. Another huge one for me. No matter where I am or what I'm doing, I always feel very empty inside. I feel like I'm missing something. I feel hollow. That's like, even when I'm on a high or like happy from my mood swings, like there's always an emptiness in me. And I'll be quite honest, it sucks. Like I, it's not fun. And that's really all I can say to describe it. But I feel it like deep in my soul every day. When I go to sleep, it's just, there's that just chronic emptiness inside of me and that sucks <laughs> um number eight this one i do not um resonate with it's feeling frequently inappropriate episodes of anger i'm not an angry person thankfully i feel really sad i feel really anxious i can feel happy i feel all of those types of things but anger like I'm not very quick to it. It takes a lot for me to get angry and still like, I'm still quiet when I'm angry. So I don't really lash out. I don't say things I don't mean. I don't get aggressive. So there are some good things about myself I need to tell myself and that is one of them. I am not angry. I'm a very peaceful person despite the emotional turmoil of sadness. <laughs> so there's that. And then the last one, number nine is stress related feelings of unreality or paranoia and that kind of like relates to the first thing about being paranoid about abandonment it also could tie into the the feelings like you're paranoid that any second your feelings are going to change you're paranoid about being abandoned you're paranoid that you know the chronic feeling of emptiness is going to take over your whole body like for other people you're paranoid that you're just going to have a random outburst of anger you're paranoid that you're going to you know have a moment where you need to do something impulsive and reckless and you're gonna go spend all your money like it just it ties into a lot of different things of all of the other symptoms so i feel like that's a very big one on most of everyone's list but out of the nine or i have them highlighted i have seven out of nine so i am you know i wouldn't say i'm the poster girl for bpd but i do have I do have a few checks and I'm making it seem like that's something to be proud of, but you know, it's, it's what it is. And I think that one of the biggest problems with this is if you Google, like this book is called talking to a loved one with borderline personality disorder. And I haven't read it all the way through. Like I have certain things in here I've, you know, highlighted. Um, this part was really interesting. It says, Many of the defining features of BPD syndrome are painfully primarily internalized experiences. Internalized obviously means like in your own body. It says abandonment fears, insecurities about relationships, feelings of emptiness, and a blurred sense of identity may be hidden from others. The borderline may experience brief feelings of unreality or paranoia that are frightening and that she may fear to share. Pause. Me. Very much. I'm always scared to like say how I'm feeling. She also may conceal her reactive moods, black and white reactivity, and rejection sensitivity. I try and hide my moods because sometimes I'm like, wow, you're being crazy. No one wants to know that. I try and hide my black and white reality of thinking someone or something is either fantastic or the worst because once again, it sounds crazy. And um, I try and hide my rejection sensi sensitivity because I'm so sensitive and I feel like a baby when I get like even the tiniest bit rejected or criticized or anything. So I try and like mask it and be like, it's cool, it's fine. But in reality, I'm like screaming inside my head. 
um, but her partner will most more than likely experience the outwardly expressed in externalized behaviors. These include rage reactions, suspicious distrust, impulsive and reckless self-damaging behaviors, and suicidal gestures. So essentially saying that if you, all of the internalized things of what's really going on tend to come out in like all of those other ways. So it's a lot to think about. It's a lot to process. And I, it also says the understanding of borderline pathology is essential for our, all parties to grasp. So this kind of ties into being in a relationship with someone who has BPD. If you search it, it literally says how to run away from narcissists and BPD. Like it all ties into thinking that we're horrible people. And let me preface with like, everyone's different. Everyone like, I, I get worked up. I also like have a hard time voicing my opinion on this, but it's possible. They make it seem like it's impossible to love someone or be with someone who has BPD. And while in certain cases, like some people, a lot of people, however many, they need to work on themselves a little or a lot before they are able to get into a relationship. So that way it doesn't turn toxic. However, I feel like I am worthy of love and being in a relationship even though I struggle with a lot of these things and it's a big reason why I have all these books and I do all this research and therapy and I'm on all these medications because I want to better myself not just for myself but for someone that I'm with because it's scary that people out there will be like they have BPD I've been told they're crazy stay away from them like I don't want that to ever be a reason that like I can't be loved because I know that I'm fully capable of it but there's the stigma out there that we're crazy and even this book that I read so sometimes I act crazy I don't necessarily love the title but it's it's just I think more people need to talk about the good parts of it and like that you can be in a relationship with someone and when I say the good parts I mean we are sensitive in a good way, we are empathetic, we are loving and caring, and we are artistic, and there are a lot, like we feel so deeply, which is the biggest part of BPD, and like a lot of times it's bad feelings, but a lot of times it's also good feelings, like we will love more than you will probably ever be loved by someone else because of the way we feel things that no one else can. So I think it's really important for me and other people to recognize that and realize that we do have downfalls but we have good things about us and the best advice i have for dating someone or being with someone that has bpd is doing your research and it's important to read and see what your partner sends you about bpd but i also think it's really important to do your own research and to make an effort that the other person sees and like whether you're a book person you are a podcast person youtube like however you feel best getting your you know information like you should make an effort doing that and i say this because there are so many elements to us and like how we re avoid you know getting triggered and how we best resolve conflict that if you learn to understand us things will go a lot more smooth, a lot sm more smoothly. Am I okay? <laughs> um, and I've been in a lot of relationships where maybe someone will glance at an article I've sent being like, hey, this is kind of like who I am and what I'm going through. This might help you understand me or whatever. And like, they might glance at it, but like, I don't know. It's, I feel like a relationship with someone who has BPD will not succeed unless you do your own continuous research and homework and it essentially just means you care about the person you're with like it also means you care about yourself like the book that i'm reading about talking to a loved one like it explains all the different ways that like you need to take care of yourself because it is tiring and a lot of different aspects being with someone who has bpd because our feelings are very like out there and they are the ones that are typically in the spotlight but it's just as important that your partner's is taken care of as well. So it also, you know, will tell you how best to handle yourself in those situations. And they have a little guide that's called SET. 
what's it called the set method so set and it means support empathy and truth and that's the best way to communicate with someone who has bpd so you're supposed to support them and be like you know i what do you need i support you like what's going on and then the empathy part is like i i can't even imagine how you're feeling like that must be so hard like you're empathizing with what they're saying or what's going on because it's not up to you to say you know it could be worse or like that's not something to be upset about like those are fighting words for someone like us like don't say something like that and then t for truth it means like you're not supposed to just just because we're feeling this doesn't mean that like you're supposed to what's the word hold on i want to find it so i can be accurate in what i'm saying <clears throat> hold on i want to, i really want to okay so it says right here support is not identification saying like yeah that happened to me too is not helpful empathy is not sympathy so you shouldn't say i feel so sorry for you because that sounds condescending you're supposed to say things like um, you're not supposed to say things I know how you feel because it can just be, you know, no one knows how people with BPD are actually feeling. So hearing that is very, like, upsetting to us. But the truth says, truth is not hard-ass confrontation. Truth does not invalidate the BP's experience. Statements such as you're overreacting or that's not what happened invite arguments that won't be resolved. <clears throat> so I think that the truth part is so you're not how do i phrase it um the truth segment of set set is facing reality but also you were supportive and empathetic first so it's not like you're coming at them with like this is the truth of the matter like because then someone will be then I would be like okay clearly you don't care about how I'm feeling or that I need support you're just like coming at me with a solution like I think that first and foremost you need to validate you need to emphasize and really show that you're there for the person before you're like okay this is how we fix it or what are we going to do about it that's just kind of what it gets at and I think that's a really good way to look at it um Another thing that I think is important is if you hate your diagnosis, like that's okay. You know, I have spent a lot of years being so pissed off that like this is how I am and this is who I am. And I'm just like, this is unfair. I just want to be normal. I want to feel what other people feel. I don't want to cry every five seconds because someone said okay instead of okay a y like literally that's all it takes for me to like have a full-blown panic attack think someone's abandoning me waking up every day even if something good is happening and feeling like chronic emptiness like trying to explain to others how i feel when no one ever gets it all of these things it's just like it makes you kind of hate yourself and hate your diagnosis and so many people tell you like you're not supposed to do that it's who you are and Truly, like, maybe this is bad advice, so take it with a grain of salt, but, like, you choose how you feel about your diagnosis, regardless if it's this or anything else. Like, healing is different for everyone, and I feel like this is something that, in order to process, you kind of, like, need to do your own thinking about it, and no one can tell you that, like, okay, everything's fine, you just gotta move past it. Because this is technically something that people can heal from, they say. BPD people are able to, you know, work towards being undiagnosed if you do enough of, like, the groundwork. And some people will be like, the sooner you accept it and get help, the faster you can be over it. And there are some people that may never be over it. And putting unrealistic expectations on them is kind of damaging. And I would put them on myself. I'm like, I'm not reading enough books. I'm not doing enough therapy. Like, I tried to get myself into CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, which like rewires your brain. And my video camera shut off. Okay. Um, tries to like rewire your brain. And I just 
I felt guilty because I'm like all those years that I just spent like hating my diagnosis when I should have been doing something about it and then I had to tell myself that it's kind of like it is but it isn't like I deal with grief from losing my father and I think that in a way no one can tell you how to grieve no one can tell you how long it takes to get over that and start accepting what actually happened or what is actually going on so I feel like it's something like this that it's on your terms like whether it takes a month or 10 years I feel like you should always be constantly working on yourself and self-aware but how long it takes you to come to terms with your own diagnosis and your own life that's up to you and even still to this day like I will read things and I'm just like this isn't fair like why can't I just be normal like why can't I just wake up and feel an emotion you know and then keep that for a little bit like why does it always have to be different and that's okay that I think that way anyone else that's okay you don't have to be sunshine and rainbows about it it is a difficult difficult disorder and it sucks so that's that um they say that a lot of I don't remember the percentage but a lot of people who have BPD it's because of their childhood growing up it can be from having unstable parents and unstable households all of those things um I don't believe mine was that way I feel like there are certain things that kind of contributed to how I am now like the fear of abandonment I definitely feel like is because my father was terminally ill my whole life and I was always so scared of leave, like losing him and then when I finally did at age 16 it was like the ultimate abandonment like not not by his choice obviously however like a lot of my paranoia of people leaving I'm always like they're gonna die like and that's obviously it doesn't take a genius to know like where that came from but even as a child I was always very anxious and quiet I was so sensitive like my mom would always be like stop being sensitive like at a restaurant like I'm terrified to say anything like to a waiter if I get my food wrong like I could be given food I'm allergic to and I still would probably eat it because like I'm terrified of confrontation like these are all things that go into it and I feel like had I known that like no one can really diagnose a small child with BPD but it's all just kind of similar things that you look back on as a child your situations your feelings you know your family members and then you kind of like figure out who you are now like a lot of those can they play a factor into it and I'm thankful that I have clarity now about who I am and what I'm dealing with. I still don't know who I am. Like, I didn't change my mind about that in 20 minutes. <laughs> but I mean who I am in the sense of like understanding what this disorder means and that I would love to have a fulfilling life someday. Not to say I don't have one now, but the chronic emptiness makes me feel like I'm missing a lot and I know there's a lot that I miss out on due to things that I pull myself away from and that also really sucks like I will feel like I am being excluded when I'm the one excluding myself it's called like the push and pull method like I'm very clingy so I will pull people towards me like and practically suffocate them but then it's like well they're gonna leave me anyway so I gotta just push them away first like there's a line in a Taylor Swift song that's like yeah I'm quoting Taylor but like if you know me you know that I do that every five seconds but there's a, a line in one of her songs that says like you have to leave before you get left and a BPD person can like fully relate to that um it's called self-sabotaging I've done that quite a few times but the reasoning behind it is just you're either too much or not enough I feel like I'm not enough so much of the time like when I'm feeling upset and I'm projecting my emotions on someone else and I'm making them feel helpless like I just I don't sit there being like I'm too much for this person I just feel like I'm not enough and I want to get to the point where I like myself enough and I 
feel better about myself and that I don't project insecurities and paranoia onto friends and family and especially who I date because I want healthy lasting relationships and I know that I have a lot a lot to give and I have a huge heart I'm very empathetic I have good qualities about myself there's just a lot to tackle with this and to sum it all up the best thing you can do for someone in your life that has BPD is take initiative do your own research it like warms our hearts to know that like you're trying to understand the hardest thing that we go through for having someone with BPD you got this it sucks and it's hard and some days are much harder than others but once you're ready to buy the books and do the therapy and all of that when you wake up in the morning and you're like okay I'm I feel like I'm accepting this and like I want to slowly get into learning and not changing who you are but working towards getting better I think that it's possible and writing helps a lot writing out your emotions in a journal or whatever that definitely helps me a lot reading these books has helped therapy has helped as long as you find the right therapist that's another thing it's taken me so many years and I finally found one who doesn't even specialize in BPD but she bought all of these books she's learning about it so she can help me and it's been a really wonderful experience and I feel like that has contributed a lot and medicine I'm pro-medicine, everyone's different, but I'm on mood stabilizers and the biggest thing, if you pay attention to people with BPD, is we have mood swings and unrealistic like highs and lows, but these have really helped level me out. I'm a lot more chill, so I'd say like instead of going from black and white from the splitting, I'm very like in the middle gray about things. So these are all different avenues and ways that you can improve yourself and I don't like saying get better because I don't like to think of us as sick I don't like to think of us as not enough as we are but I know the way we feel inside makes us feel not enough and makes us feel ill sometimes like physically but I don't know if anything of what I said has made sense if it helps even like one person or make at least one person feel not alone for the time that they've read this, read this, <laughs> that they have listened to this, then I am very thrilled and it was worth me sitting here talking like an idiot with all of my books and sounding like I know what I'm talking about. I don't, I, these are all my own opinions and just things that I have learned on my own and figured out and everyone is different and I'm not a licensed therapist so these are all just disclaimers at the end of my video but I'm sending love and positivity to everyone out there who struggles with this that is dating someone who has this that has a family member please be patient with them know that we don't choose this we are doing our very best and we would appreciate the same patience and understanding coming our way and yeah that's it happy bpd awareness month continue sharing things on social media like open up conversations about it that's another big thing that i would really love to request because more people need to know about it and it's up to us to spread the word so thank you for watching this um i hope everyone has a fantastic week and that everyone is staying safe and happy out there